Getting depth of field to behave naturally often takes more work than expected. You usually need to keyframe, focus distances, or constantly tweak settings just to keep your subject sharp. But autofocus camera add-on can fix that. It automatically updates the camera's focus based on what's in frame, making it much easier to get better results. We've talked about once about lens sim, which is a great add-on that is all about simulating real lens behavior. And this one leads more into autofocus behavior. And if you've used the camera controller add-on before, this was actually designed with that workflow in mind, but it works fine on its own. It sits in the M panel, like most add-ons. From there, you can turn the autofocus system on and let it handle the depth of field and it can do that for you in real time. When you enable autofocus, the add-on starts by casting a single ray from the center of the camera view. Whatever it hits becomes the focal point and the camera's focus distance is gonna be adjusted to match that. You can see it live in the viewport as you scrub through the timeline or move the camera. For example, if one object is centered, it will stay in sharp focus automatically. This works well when your subject stays around the middle of the frame, but in shots with more going on or where depth changes, you will probably want to switch to smart focus. Smart focus uses a grid of rays instead of a single one. You can set how dense that grid is using the grid size option. The add-on calculates the average hit point from all the rays to determine where to focus. In a scene with three objects, one in the front, one mid-ground, and one in the back, smart focus can pick a more balanced focal point instead of locating just the front one. And there are two weighing modes, prioritize center and prioritize proximity. Prioritize center will try to stay focused on whatever is closest to the middle of the frame, while proximity gives more importance to the closest object overall. You got sliders to adjust how much each one is influencing the results. And if you want to understand what's actually going on or what it's actually seeing, there is an overlay option that shows the detection grid directly in the viewport. This can help troubleshoot if it's locking onto the wrong object or background element. If your camera is moving across a row of objects or zooming from the front one to the one in the back, you want to adjust the focus transition time. At zero, the focus jumps instantly. But if you set it to something like one, I mean one second or half a second, you will get a smooth pull focus effect as the subject changes. There are also two visual effects that you can turn on, bounce and breathing. Bounce simulates the tiny overshoot or correction you see in real autofocus systems. For example, when the focus shifts to an object, it might briefly go a little bit too far, then pull back. You can adjust how much bounce there is, how long it takes, and how frequently it happens. Breathing is when the image slightly zooms in or zooms out as the focus changes, like when your lens suddenly shifts the field of view. It is a small effect, but it helps sell the realism. You will see it best in shots where the camera pulls from an object to another at different depths. Sometimes smart focus won't hit exactly what you need. Maybe you're trying to focus on a logo or a label that is slightly off the center or behind a transparent object, and that's where offset sliders come in. You can nudge the focus point left or right, up or down in the standard autofocus, or even push it forward or backward along the z-axis. These can be keyframed, and there are buttons to add or remove keyframes or jump between them. There is also a one-click option to clear all the autofocus keyframes if you want to reset everything and start fresh. So even the automatic system gets you most of the way there. You can find with the rest manually without fighting the tool. You also get quick access to the usual depth of field controls like f-stop, blade count, rotation, and ratio. There are also a couple of extras like a toggle to show focus limits in the viewport and another to overlay focus info while you're working, which I find kind of tiny and unreadable to be honest. By default, autofocus camera only affects the viewport, so if you render using the command line or render farm, the focus changes won't be saved unless you bake them. The add-on lets you bake the detected focus into keyframes on the camera. You can bake the full timeline or just a specific range. Once baked, the animation will render with the same focus behavior you saw during playback. On a side note, it is best to bake in solid viewport mode, 
since it updates faster and keeps the focus system accurate. If you're trying to bake a material preview or render view, things might lag or break the focus detection. And there you have it guys. If you are interested in this add-on, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.